Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to episode 34 of Why Would You Show Me This? I am Will. I'm Danny. And uh, it's another pick from Danny today. Yep. And she showed me one from her childhood, right? Yeah, I would say so. Kind of, sort of? Yeah. yeah. All right. And what is that movie? Uh, well, you clicked on us, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, I picked uh, Muriel's Wedding. Um, and we will, uh, I-, I will read the synopsis. Um, a young social outcast in Australia steal- steals money from her parents to finance a vacation where she hopes to find happiness and perhaps love. It's a really kind of... It's very like... I don't the- like that. <laughs> I mean, that that really waters down a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But so, it doesn't tell you what's going on in the movie. Which it is really doesn't. But and, and that is good. Yeah. So I guess that's, that is good. But also that would mislead you a little bit, I feel like. I mean, in a good way, I think. I think that it, it, it's still kind of what the movie is, but it's not telling you exactly what the movie is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah definitely. So what did you think of it? I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. Uh, it was funny. Um, it, 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 the, the comedy is kind of stuck in one half of the movie, though. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's like the, it, it opens up and it's like, this is a comedy movie. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, it's not a comedy movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it gets real. Yes. Although yeah. I feel like that's a lot of comedy movies though. Like there's a part where it gets kind of real. Well, like, like even if it's a comedy. Yes. Yes. This one gets real, real. And it doesn't really get super funny after it gets real. <laughs> no. It kind of just stays real. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I, I think I like it because of that. Yeah. It stays real. Mm-hmm. You know, I liked, um, I liked Muriel's character arc. Mm-hmm. it was very uh it's like what i was thinking in my head is at the beginning of the movie you feel bad for her you do and then once you get towards the end you kind of feel sad for her mm-hmm. because she's um she knows the deal with what's going on mm-hmm. but she still goes through with it because she just wants someone to marry her mm-hmm. she wants love yeah that like in the end it's really all she kind of wants yeah is, is love and acceptance and mm-hmm. All that because she doesn't really feel that from her family. Nope. Terrible family. Except for, I mean, her mom is very loving. Her mom is very loving. Um, she's is, also kind of not there, though. Um, <laughs> years of conditioning, Yeah, I feel, has made her that way. Yeah, She's very, what? She's mm-hmm. very absent in her present mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is sad because she obviously is trying to escape. Yes, that, she is. Which is sad. Yes. Um, but Muriel also has siblings. She does. She has three, right? Four. Oh. What's the blonde, little blonde hair girl? I think the blonde hair girl. That's not her sibling. No? no, that's the other woman's uh, daughter. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but she has two, three siblings. Yes. She has two brothers and one and sister. one sister. And they all. You're terrible, Muriel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your favorite thing. It is. Um, and they all don't do anything. No, none of them. Um, which I find interesting. Um, but it seems that the dad has kind of made that happen. A yeah, bit. the day the dad is not made out to be a good uh character. No. I, I mean we failed to mention also that uh Muriel is played by Tony Collette. Yes. Um I don't know how old or young she is in this. See, um, she seems pretty young to she me. Is, she is young in this, yeah. I, just, I don't know how old she is. I would assume she's close to the twenty two year old that the character should be. Yeah. So, um, and then the other actress, I can't remember her name. Rachel Griffiths. That's right, from, uh, from Six, Six Feet Under, who I, I knew from Six Feet Under. Um, so it's the first time I've ever seen her with her accent, so. Um, and then the guy, I can't remember his name either, from Priscilla, who's also in this. Who plays her dad. father. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know his name. Um, but he's also pretty good in this. Mm-hmm. But he plays a completely different character. Yes, yes so. he does. Yes he does. Um, but... Their second Australian movie. Yeah, you're the uh, Australian cinema connoisseur. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like two movies. Two movies hey, I haven't shown you any Australian films. That's true. I uh, I don't know many Australian films. Wolf Creek. I know that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, when when watching this when I was younger, I had no idea this was Australian. Like, mm-hmm. that didn't what did you think it was? was? You just like, oh, they have fun in voices. Oh, it's european yeah. <laughs> i because i when i was younger i had a very hard time deciphering between uh english and australian i couldn't yes. tell the difference very well so yeah. i didn't really know but it mm-hmm. didn't it also didn't matter to me i was like okay mm-hmm. they just talk you're not from here I yeah get it. they talked to me yeah. that's cool whatever yeah. you know 
So, uh, and I remember watching this when I was younger, and I think this is one of those things where it, like, popped up on HBO, and I just watched yeah. it, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and I remember the, uh, the, not sex scene, because it's not a sex scene, but the scene- It's an audible se- It's audio sex. <laughs> yeah, where, where Miriam kind of. almost has sex. Yeah. Um, and her friend, Rachel uh-huh. Griffiths, is having sex with two different guys. Yeah. That whole scene, I had no idea what was actually going on when I was younger. Well, I, I would hope like, not. I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, but that was funny. Uh-huh. Um, but Muriel is picked on by basically everybody. In, in her, her hometown of... Uh, Corpus Spit. Corpus Spit. Yeah. Yes. What a great town name. It is. <laughs> it's great. Um... And no one is nice to her, despite the fact that she actually is a very nice uh, person. Yes. Um, so, um, she um, she ends up like hanging with her friends, and her friends tell her that they really don't want her around anymore. Which they they tell her in, in kind of the meanest way that they can, and they're also yeah. not very sensitive to the fact that they're telling her that. And no. It's, and, and again, there's usually no reason for it other than the fact that they say that she's poor. Is that what they say? That she doesn't have any money? She doesn't have any money because they're going on a vacation. They are. Um, to some sort of island. Well, no, they're going on the girl's honeymoon. Yes. And her husband is not going with her for some reason. I think they I think they ended up calling it a vacation because of that. No, no, no. Because they have the discussion that, oh, well, you know. Uh, we'll go. We'll go with you on your honeymoon, and he won't come, and all that stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what they talked about when, okay. uh, when they told Muriel he, they get the fuck out. Um, and uh, and <laughs> Muriel, uh, obviously, spoilers. By the way, I mean it's a it's a fairly dated movie, but I I thought I would just let you know that we're gonna get into things that kind of spoil the movie. But um, Muriel ends up ends up. Uh, taking stuff stuff taking money from her family or from her dad yes to go on vacation to go where they're going for to, their to go where her friends ditched her basically yes and all of that stuff um and that's basically where she runs into rachel griffiths and kind of um finds her individuality kind of um i mean in a way she's basically she found someone to be the the voice for her. Mm-hmm. Someone to stick up for her. Yes. Which no one really had no. before. So no. That's kind of sad. Yes. She she basically was a spitting in image of her mother at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, except for she, uh, Muriel seemed to actually want to change her life. Yes. Where her mother seemed to be okay with it or mm-hmm. battered into being okay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, by the husband that's uh one thing that i really liked that the movie did is that um even the people that are shitty they're not particularly villainized um i mean uh her dad is a complete dick Uh um cheats on his wife uh um more spoilers when his wife eventually dies he uses the funeral to show that he has clout in the community mm-hmm. um more than actually giving a shit that she is dead yeah um and even with all that with with the the underlying tone of abuse in his family it's not really ever strictly shown mm-hmm. i mean he calls them useless but that's you know i mean it's it, it, i feel like it's it's it, they hinted it just enough mm-hmm. that he's not so great to his family yes um And, uh, but at the end, it's never like he's a piece of shit and we need to, you need to know that he's a piece of shit. Um, in the end, I actually feel like Muriel is, tells him something he should have been told a long time ago and he actually responds to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that's the feeling I got with like his when character. She, when she tells him he need to take care of them. Yeah, yeah. When it's like when when he's trying to get her to take care of the her brother and sisters, and mm-hmm. she she says no, you got to. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with the 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 women that picked on Muriel when she was younger. Um, I mean, I don't know. They're never really like made out to be. Like it, it it's just like they're horrible people, sure, but. 
we're not gonna like fucking hang them because of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like it's like they are they are bad people, but it still kind of gives you that air of like even bad people can change. Yeah. Because at a certain point in the movie, Mural is a bad person. Yeah, she is. Yeah, and she she doesn't treat the people that. I mean, it's a very the very heartbreaking scene of when she is getting married and she doesn't even notice that her mom is there and her mm -hmm. mom's all dressed up. She looks nice and she bought her a present and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's the saddest part of the movie I for sure. Is the, is the mom. The mom is the saddest part. Yeah, sure. yeah. The mom is very dedicated to the family, which is sad because it's like yeah. almost her she pretty detriment. much does everything for everyone. Well, it's her detriment. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what ends up kind of taking her out, unfortunately. Well, yeah, she does so everything, sad. and no one shows her appreciation. No one cares. Yeah, yeah. no one. Not even Muriel, really. No. Well, even I mean, and the sad thing is, is that I mean, at the same time, she kind of ran away from all of it, so. But I mean, yeah, but before then, it didn't even seem like she really was like helping out around the house or doing I, anything. I feel like she was trying more than her her siblings, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, probably. I, I would definitely say that as well. I mean, you can tell that I think I think that it was one of those things where it took for her mom to die for her to be like, oh, oh yeah. like, uh, you know, to really actually appreciate everything that she did for her and the family. No, I agree. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. Um. So what what do you think about muriel's actual wedding oh i think her actual wedding was was it that that is the part of the movie where i felt sad for her mm -hmm. um because you know it's she she's so broken that she's totally okay with a, a sham wedding mm -hmm. just so she can have the wedding that she's always wanted mm -hmm. and the fake feeling of she is loved mm -hmm. um but it's it's none of that but also and also loved by a man who's like yeah, of course. It's like a good looking guy. Super and she's like, attractive. ooh, yeah. like the, when she first meets him, because um, it's she finds an article in the paper. It's, that, it's like an ad. Almost. Yeah, it's like an ad for uh, need need a woman to marry a man or mm -hmm. something. And, and, she, and it says must be Australian. Must be Australian. Yeah, basically it's a green card marriage yes. where she's going to be marrying this uh, swimmer guy who's trying to compete in some sort he's, of competition. He's from South Africa. He's from South Africa. Right. Yeah. Um, but the whole time that she's meet him, she's just like laughing and just staring at him with this huge smile, not even listening to what it, what's the, being said. Half the time she doesn't even listen to the coach. And yeah. Like what he's saying to her. Yeah. Him. So she's just, you know, it shows that Muriel is very, she is a shallow person. Mm -hmm. um, at least but she's been made that way. She has been made that way. Of course. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think this movie has a lot of great uh, character arcs. It does. With both Muriel and um Rach rachel griffith's character mm -hmm. uh, i don't know why i can't remember her name um and the dad mm -hmm. um i mean the mom's character arc is very fucking sad mm -hmm. um but it it's it, it's meant it's in there for a reason mm -hmm. um but yeah i think the movie uh is is well written in that that respect um i have one problem but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, I would like to talk about this movie and your obsession with ABBA. <laughs> I love ABBA. So Danny much. loves ABBA. I do. I really like ABBA. She's she's shown me. This is the second movie I've shown you with ABBA. Yep. I, I guess Australians love ABBA. They do. I mean, do. both Priscilla and this. Which is weird because I was from Sweden. Yes, they're Swedish. That's, yes. So I don't understand. That. I know that. I like how you're questioning that. I'm the one that knows. Yeah, they're Swedish. They're Swedish. So I don't understand the, like, preoccupation with, uh... I mean, they make good music, for they sure. No, they do. What is your preoccupation? I Why do know. you love ABBA? Um, like, I can't remember who it was, if it was my mom or sister that had a CD that was ABBA Gold. So I was, know that CD. So it was yeah. all ABBA hits, uh -huh. and I listened to it over and over and over and over again. I, I'm a dancer. I don't think that is something anyone doesn't know about me, but... Uh, Abba's really fun to dance to, obviously. So is that like the number one reason why you love Abba? Abba. No, I don't know. I can't tell you why I like Abba. It's just it makes you dance to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just kind of how Abba is. Um, and they write songs about weird things. Like Waterloo is very <laughs> prominently featured in this movie. Um. And that's that they're literally singing about Waterloo and Napoleon and all kinds of weird shit. And that's like, what? Like, what are they singing about? You know, the same thing with like Fernando. Mm -hmm. You know, Fernando is is like a um, like Castanets like Spanish song that they made. You know what I mean? 
What's your favorite deep cut ABBA song? Deep cut. Deep cut. What is? What's that? Not single. I don't know. You don't know any? I don't think so. You, well, you did have the gold CD. I did. See, that's okay. <laughs> the thing. You knew all the hits. Uh huh. Man of the Midnight. That's one of my favorite songs by them. Man of the Midnight. I think that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I've never heard of that song. It's really good. We'll listen to it after this. Okay. All right. Everybody go search Man of the Midnight. I'm pretty sure that's what that's it's That's a called. weird title. I guess they're I'm Swedish, almost... so that might make sense. Yes. It's, I'm almost certain that's what it's called. It's, if, if that's the name of the song, you're going to feel really dumb right now. We will look it up, and we will see if Man of the Midnight is the name of the song. Okay. All right. So, um, what would you say your favorite character of the film is? Mm. I think um, it's really hard because it's toss up between Muriel for me and uh, Rachel. Rachel's character. I can't really remember her name. I don't know. I can't. Jesus Christ. There's a lot of names. Rhonda? I think, yeah, it's Rhonda. Rhonda? So, Sounds sure. right, yeah. Um, and I like them both a lot because they both kind of encompass different reactions to different things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I love Rhonda's like Rhonda's like the punk best friend she is. that every quiet person needs. She is. And um, I love the fact that her and Muriel like work across the street from each other. Yeah, well, that seems that. very funny. That seems hilarious. Yeah, Muriel that. works at a, a a video store, which I was very happy when that came on. I was like, oh, she works at a video store. That's cool. Um, after she runs away from home, though, with she... with the twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh no! At this point, now I see. That's the thing that I didn't quite get. Does she spend all of the twelve thousand dollars? On the vacation honeymoon thing. I don't know. Or does she still have some when she uh, comes back and goes to Sydney? I, I would assume that I she still know. has some. Maybe, but she also They never some, really get into but that. But she also has a job when she runs away, so... She, I mean, she works at a video store. I mean, I don't know how much she's going to be making. Well, Rhonda also lives in the same apartment as her. Yeah, the, but Rhonda is a dry cleaner. Like, that's what she does. Combined income, maybe they make enough. Yeah, I maybe know. rent isn't that much in Sydney. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. But um, they're happy. Yes. Um, but at one point, um, so are we going to get into Rhonda's yeah, story arc here? Say, yeah. At one point, Rhonda. Um, After Rhonda's um, adventurous threesome with two navy men. Yeah. <laughs> Good for um, her. she. Good for her. She. Uh, I don't know. She just kind of falls down. She does. Something happens. Um. Oh, they said she had a tumor on her. But spine. yeah, but like she basically just kind of falls down. And she's like, I can't move my legs. I think because possibly what she was doing might have aggravated whatever it was. Probably, and yeah. It, it, well, she she had like a hard fall on her yeah, butt. Yeah, she couldn't. And that was around. She couldn't feel her legs. Yeah, anymore. So, yeah. I mean, it must have been aggravated enough that it was starting to affect things, which mm -hmm. is uh, unfortunate. Which is funny because when she gets, when she goes to the hospital, um, she has to talk to her. That, that wouldn't be because of too much sex, would it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which I love. Yeah. Um, but uh, sadly, she never really gets better from it. No, she's um, she, she's wheelchair bound. She tries her best. She with, does uh, with physical therapy because she obviously wants to walk again. But it 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 uh it comes back. It comes back, and she she has to have another surgery, and she won't yeah. be able to walk after that. And throughout all this, she's still smoking cigarettes. Which every time <laughs> I saw her light up a cigarette, I was like, it's not helping you. At the same time. It's like, who cares? I know. You know She's I mean? the kind of person that was like, I don't give a shit. I'm right. going to keep smoking. I got one type of cancer, which apparently was the tumor, um, was a type of cancer. And uh, and so I could see her being like, I have one type of cancer. Like, fuck it. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. I could see that yeah. being like, I need this to get me through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that something like that with the lifestyle that she lived and just the, the free kind of freeness of her. Mm -hmm. And she does whatever she wants. Like not having her legs is a really big thing. It, it is. It really, it really changes her life. And it movie. changes hers and uh, Muriel's relationship too. Oh, big time! I mean, actually, no, it doesn't. The thing that changes her and Mur Muriel's relationship is Muriel's selfishness. Well, you could also kind of say that Muriel uses what she does as a coping mechanism for dealing with the fact that she is away from her family and mm -hmm. that is all going on and not only that but now her best friend is wheelchair bound and she's there by her she's side. taking care of she's her by, yeah she's basically her. yeah and she i mean she even ran some you know rachel ran some raves at one point about everything that she does for her and stuff like that mm -hmm. 
So I almost feel like in, in some aspect when... And I, I don't want to spoil it in case anyone... We spoiled a lot of the movie I know, so but far. We can keep that part a secret. When, we, when Rhonda finds out what she's been doing, I feel she's being... I mean, at first I'd be upset, but I feel like she's being a little judgmental of Miro's coping mechanism. Like, that's something she's doing, like, in her off time. Yeah, but like, then she, then she she finds out how much Muriel has lied to her from the beginning, from when they started being friends. True, but I feel that she should be a bit more understanding about the reason why she would lie about it. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it's very... Muriel lies out of uh, shame and embarrassment more than it is uh, manipulation on her part. Like, that's not why she does it. She does it because she feels shame about it she does start to manipulate the uh wedding store the no, wedding g- abs- gown absolutely, absolutely. stores for sure well, and, and that i feel uh perfectly encapsulates uh how an addiction can spiral out of control yes like even yeah. something so innocuous is like trying trying on wedding dresses that's yeah. right trying on wedding dresses mm. then it can get to an unhealthy degree because of what what exactly you're using it for yes you know what i mean yeah so I like how that was handled mm-hmm. a lot. Um, I even like the fact that Rhonda's not especially forgiving about no, it. No, she shouldn't be. Um, I, I do like that aspect of it as well. It's it's realistic. Yeah. Um, Rhonda does show up for Muriel's wedding when she marries the uh, the swimmer. Mm-hmm. She's not supportive of it, however. She makes no. that very clear yeah. to uh, Muriel. Um, and it's very sad because she also informs uh, Muriel that she is moving back to Porpoise Spit with her mother, which is the uh, very last thing she even wanted to do, was move back there. Well, she only had to because of Muriel. That's right. Um, And I feel bad about that, and I don't at the same time. Like, I I understand Muriel wanting to do what she wanted to do on her own, and she shouldn't necessarily feel responsible for someone else, but I guess at the same time, if your friend is wheelchair-bound and needs you, maybe you should try to... Stick with them if you can. I mean, it's it. It's a very tough situation to be in, but it is. It does boil down to selfishness. Well, the part, way I mean, the she ditches her for a marriage. It's not even real. It's not even real. So. And the fact that earlier Muriel basically was like, "Without you, I wouldn't have been able to move forward in my life." Mm-hmm. So, um, for someone that has done that for you, you would think that she would care to mm-hmm. help her. No, I, I would think so. Yeah. Um, I would like to get into my one small tiny flaw of this film. Oh, go for it. Um, so during the scene in which Rhonda uh, finds out that she has uh, or something is wrong when she falls down and says she can't use her legs. Um, that is the date night in which uh, um, Muriel has found a date. A guy that came into the video, video store. store quite a bit. Yes. And he's like, would you go out with me? And so they go out and they almost have sex until all the craziness happens. Yeah. Um, and then they don't talk again. We, we don't really see him. Mm-mm. Um. So I assumed that he, I see, I thought he was going to come back. I was like, oh, he's going to be a character throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Um. It's going to be like a love interest for her. Mm-hmm. So then we get the whole marriage stuff and we get to the actual marriage ceremony and he comes and he is in the uh pew in a pew yeah. watching the marriage so he watches it um and then he's, he gets a little teary and then we don't see him again for the rest of the movie no he's gone he's gone i think that was a little wasted um mm-hmm. either either he could have just been just been the tryst um that one night and leave him out of the rest of the movie yeah. or if you're gonna have him there at the wedding, have another scene with him before mm-hmm. the end of the movie. Yeah, that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, it's just a, a, a loose end that yeah. they didn't tie up. That I was like, the, the, you could have just cut him out of that scene, mm-hmm. and it would have been fine. No, I understand. Um, but yeah, I, that's the small little teeny flaw I had with this movie. Right. Not, it wasn't it's not much. So you did like it though? I did. Okay. Yeah, no, I did. I'm glad. I like it. It's it's funny. It's it's got heart. Um, it's yeah. real. Yeah. In parts as well. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Oh, definitely. Um, so what would you rate it? Um, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Oh, shit. Yeah. Is it the highest you've rated one of my films or no? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think I gave Priscilla an 8. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's high for the Australian films for you. 
It's high for good films. <laughs> it's high for and films just, that are made they, well. They just happen to be Australian. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you need. We need to watch more Australian okay, films. Okay. We need to seek them I got, out. I got a few. Yeah, I think we watched uh, Next of Kin. Wasn't it Australian? I think so. I like that. You didn't like that though. No. Yeah. But that's okay. Any Australian films that anyone knows of, please yeah. let us know. Let's... What would you rate it? Um, I would rate it eight. Eight out of ten? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Good weddings. Good fun. Good good revenge that happens in it. Yeah. High school revenge. Good shit. Love Cocksuckers. It. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um it's just it's just good fun and it gets real and I like mm -hmm. that. I like movies that do that where it's fun and it's like, oh, this is also like a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do this. Don't be like this. Yeah, don't be like this. Yeah. It's a good example. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I uh sorry. I uh I like the movie. Of course you did. You showed it to me. I, know. I would assume you wouldn't show me a movie that you don't like. I know, but I did give you a choice between this and... and yeah, she did give movie. me a choice between... Uh, uh, she asked me, uh, American or... or uh, American or Australian. Yeah, you said and Australian. I picked Australian, and thank God I didn't pick American, because... That one's still going to come up anyway. Apparently, I guess I'm still going to have to watch it. She told me it was going to be, but I guess it's still going to be in the podcast at some point, so we won't say it. That's right. Don't say it. Don't spoil it. Okay. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> Going back to what you said about this is a movie that you saw on a movie channel. Another movie that I saw on a movie channel that we did for the live stream was Freaked. Oh, Freaked. The wonderful, wonderful, weird masterpiece from Alex Winter. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very awesome, fun live stream. Yes, it was. It was. This is the future talking. This it was. We were talking to you for the future. From the future, not the past. Just trust us. Everything's okay. Everything went great. Um, I love that movie. And um, if you have not seen that movie, please see that movie. If you want to watch it with our commentary or not, it's a great film. Either. If you just Google one. it, you can find it. It's not on streaming services, but it's other places. It's true. Because um, the DVD is very expensive. Oh, that's fun. Yes. That's fun. Oh, yeah. It's, it hasn't been re-released yet. So. Oh, wow. What about Region Free? I don't know about Region Free. If you have a Region Free player, you might be able to find one. But whatever. That's a different thing. Sorry. So you get one more episode or two? I don't this know This is the I fourth don't... film you've shown me? <laughs> that, yeah. If that's the case, I get two more. This is the fourth. You got two more. Then I All got right. two more. All right. Okay. All right. Two more, and then I'm picking the most craziest fucking shit ever to show you. <laughs> Great. Well, then I'll make sure that my last one is also the same. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Well, is there anything you would like to say to the good people that have been listening and watching us for, for months upon months now? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, um, for listening, watching, uh, and everything in between. Hanging out on the live stream. Yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, I know some people hung out with me while I played Alien Isolation recently on the Twitch channel. That'll happen again, probably. Y yeah, no, I plan on doing that, <laughs> uh, every Tuesday oh, until okay. I finish okay. the damn Do it. Finish game. The, finish the game, Alien Man. Alien Man. I'm not Alien Man. Well, Don't call me Alien look Man. Look at your hair. Aliens are gray. They're not green. You don't know. I do know. I met them. Oh, so true. I met some of them. Oh, the, the grays? The grays. I met them. Okay. I shook their hand. They were nice. Okay. Nothing to fear. Okay. Don't fear the Reaper. <laughs> or an alien. Or the aliens. Or the aliens. All right. Let's Always listen to Blue Oyster Cult. Oyster Cult. Okay. Blue Oyster Cult. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just going to continue to yell Blue Oyster Cult into the <laughs> microphone and everyone will love it. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, we'll see you next week with another one of Danny's picks. Yep. Uh, please come hang out with us at the live stream if you can on Saturday nights. If you can't, thanks for listening. Anyways, yes. We will see you next Tuesday, Tuesday or Saturday. Tuesday or Saturday. Yeah. One of them. One of them. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.